Welcome back to Mathematics Lifeline. Today, I'd like to start talking about integration by parts and how we can use it to solve more tough integrals. So when we use integration by parts, there's a lot of steps and here's the formula for it. We're basically wanting to break the integral down into easier functions to differentiate and integrate. And the goal is we have this complicated integral that we're going to break down to make the integral much easier. So a lot of times when we do these integrals, they're in the form of integral of some f of x times g of x and what we want it in this form so that we can pick what our u is and what our dv is you'll see what i'm talking about here in a second but it's a lot this is basically the product rule for integrals so what we do is we use this formula so in order to do this we need to pick a u value and pick a dv so we're looking for a u and we're looking for a dv so that then we can find du by taking the derivative of u and we can find the v by taking the integral of the v or of the dv so when we do that a general rule is this acronym liate so it's weird you can kind of think of it in different ways but basically these all stand for a different type of function so the L stands for logarithmic function. So you can see that's gonna look like ln of x or, nat or just the log of x, anything like that. The I stands for inverse trig. So inverse sine, inverse tangent, anything like that. A stands for algebraic or algebra. So we're dealing with just the x's and their powers. So x squared, three x to the fourth, nine x to the hundredth, anything like that. Um, T stands for regular trig. So that's just your sine, cosine, tangent, you know, so on. And then exponential is when you have your x is raised in the power. So, for example, e to the x or like 4 to the x or any number raised to the x power, we would use e for. So the reason it's in this order is because, generally speaking, when you go to pick your u, you're going to follow this pattern. So logarithmic functions would come as your u first. After that, you have inverse trig, then algebraic, then trig, then exponential. So this is a helpful acronym in choosing our u, but basically we want a u that's going to reduce when we take the derivative of it. That way it makes it easier to do these formulas for. So essentially, you know, this is just a way to break it down. Like I said, break down the integral into easier steps. That way it doesn't seem so unmanageable because there isn't a definite product rule like we have for derivatives. So let's do a couple of examples. Okay. So here's our first example. It's the integral of x times e to the x. Um, so we see that we have two functions being multiplied by each other. We have this algebraic function here and we have the exponential function. So when we're doing integration by parts, we need to choose a u. So we're gonna have a u equals something and we're gonna have a dv equals something. And remember our acronym we used was liate. So in this function right here, what we have is we have an algebraic function and an exponential. So A comes before E. So what that means is we're going to choose this X as our U. So because we've chosen the X as the U, the only thing that's left is this E to the X DX right here, which is going to be our DV. So our DV is E to the X DX. So now in order to find, we need to find a V and we need to find a DU. And we're doing that just doing the integrals and derivatives of what we have here. So the easiest one is going to be the du. du is just the derivative of x. So we're taking the derivative of our u. So du is just going to be 1, because the derivative of x is 1, and then dx. So that part is easy. Now, the dv, the way to get a v is we have to integrate it. So in order to find a v, we're going to take the integral of e to the x dx. And we know that that's a pretty easy integral. It's just the same thing. It's e to the x. So now we have our u, our v, our du, and our dv. So, and also with this, this integral right here, I know there's a plus c, but we're gonna add that at the end of the main integral. So just to avoid any confusion. So now what we wanna do is plug these values into our formula. So we have, the first thing is u times v. So we know what that is. That's x times e to the x. So that's our first step. Then we're gonna subtract the integral of v times du which we know our v is e to the x and then that's multiplied by our du which is 1 dx so it's really just e to the x dx and again now we have something that's way simpler than what this is we've 
we have this integral and something that we just know by heart, right? So we know the integral of e to the x is just going to be e to the x. So our final answer for this is x e to the x minus e to the x because we're subtracting the integral. And then remember, this is where we're going to add our plus c. So that right there is the integral of x e to the x dx. So let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, so our second example here is the integral of x times cosine of 5x. Now again, we need to use integration by parts here because we have two functions being multiplied together. So the first step is always to pick our u and to pick our dv. So now we need to use Liate to figure out what our u and our dv are. So see what functions we have. We have an algebraic function and then we have a trigonometric function. So we know algebraic comes before trigonometric. So we know that x is going to be our u value. So u equals x. dv is going to be what's left, which is just the cosine of 5x. So dv is cosine of 5x dx. Now we need to find our v and our du. So our du is just the derivative of that u, which we know the derivative of x is just 1 dx. And then our v, we need to integrate cosine of 5x. And in order to do that, remember we have to do a u substitution. So this is the integral of cosine of 5x. So we need to do a u substitution. So we'll say that u equals 5x, du equals 5 dx. And then now we can solve this integral that way. So we know that also du over 5 is equal to dx. So we can pull a one-fifth out. So we have one-fifth times the integral of cosine of u, du. And we know that this is one-fifth sine of u. And we know what our u is. It's just 5x. So sine of 5x. So that's going to be our v. We integrated cosine of 5x. So that's going to be our v is one-fifth sine of 5x. So now, again, we're doing the same thing here. It's just a little bit harder to get the v because we need to do a harder integral for it. But it's still going, you'll see, it's going to break down our integral to where we can solve this one in a much easier fashion. So now that we have all of our values, we need to just, just plug into the formula. So uv is going to be 1 fifth x sine of 5x. Then we have minus the integral of v times du. And we know that du is just going to be dx. So we're just really doing the integral of v. So this is 1 fifth sine of 5x dx. And then now with this part right here, we need to do another u substitution to solve this integral, but it is something we can do in one step. So we broke the integral down into something much easier to solve. So we'll do a u sub. So u equals 5x du over 5 equals dx, just like the last one. And so now we'll just go ahead and solve this integral. So we can pull this one-fifth out. So we have one-fifth times the integral of basically the function we have in here. So this is going to be one-fifth sine of u du. We can pull this one-fifth out again to be 1 over 25 times. And then when we integrate sine of u, we get negative cosine of u. So we have negative 1 over 25 cosine of u, and we know what our u is again. Our u is just going to be equal to 5x, so we just plug in our 5x for u, and that's the integral of this part right here. So now that we know what this part is here, we just write down our final answer. So we have 1 over 5, x sine of 5x, and then minus this result right here. So minus negative is going to be a positive, so it's plus 1 over 25, and then we just have the cosine of 5x. And remember, this was an indefinite integral, so we do still need to add the plus c. But this right here is our answer. It is a little long, but you can see that we were able to solve this just using this integration by parts technique. So it does make this example much easier. So let's go on and do one more example for this video. Okay, so here's our last example for the video. So we have the integral of x squared e to the x. And the reason I wanted to do this integral is because sometimes in when you're doing integration by parts, you'll have to do it more than once. And the reason for that is because when you take the u and you take the derivative of it, well, we know that that du becomes part of our product. 
So sometimes that du is not going to be a constant term. And if it's not, then most of the time what we're going to have to do is do integration by parts again. So it's still the same process. You just might have to do it one more time. So when we're doing this, we still need to pick our u and our dv, just like normal. So u equals to something and then dv equals something. And we're gonna use this liate to figure that out. So remember that exponential functions are e to the x, so they come last, which means algebraic functions, which are x squared, is gonna come first. So that means that's gonna be our u. So u is equal to x squared. And our dv is just going to be what's left, which is this e to the x dx. So now we need to find our du and we need to find our v. Well, both of these are pretty easy. So our du is the derivative of x squared, which we know is just 2x, and then the dx. And then our v, we need to just integrate e to the x, and we know that that's just going to be e to the x. Okay. So now, let me get rid of this to make some room. But we're just going to plug into our formula. So we have u times v, which is x squared e to the x. So we have that, x squared e to the x, minus the integral of v du, which we see here is 2x times e to the x. So that's going to be 2x e to the x dx. So now we would generally just integrate this, but here's the problem we still have a product of two functions. So we're gonna to have to do integration by parts again in order to get this integral, which is okay, but it is a little bit more tough and it adds a little bit more steps to this problem, but you will see this um, pretty often. So, but again, it's the same thing. We're just gonna pick a new u, v, du, and dv. So we're gonna pick our u and dv and then solve for du and v. So, when we do this, we still have u equals to something and dv equals something. So we still have an algebraic function times an exponential, so the algebraic is going to come first. So our u is going to be the 2x, and then our dv is what's left, e to the x dx. So now we need to find our du, which our du, we know the derivative of 2x is just 2 dx. And then we know the integral of e to the x is going to be our v, so that's just e to the x. So now we want to rewrite this again um, in terms of what we have. So remember, we this term still is here. The x squared e to the x is still here. So we have x squared e to the x minus, now this whole integral is a new integration by part step. So we want to separate that with a bracket not to get confused. So then we have our new uv here. So this is 2x e to the x, right? So here are 2x e to the x. And again, we're still doing the formula minus the integral of v du, which this time you'll see is the integral of 2 e to the x dx, which this is a much easier integral. We know what the integral of e to the x is, so we know that the integral of 2 e to the x is just going to be 2 e to the x. So now when we, we can integrate this, and so we really have x squared e to the x minus, still our brackets, 2x e to the x minus 2 e to the x. And then now all we need to do is distribute this negative to everything and we'll have our answer. So now we're going to have x squared e to the x. This negative comes inside, so minus 2x e to the x. And then this negative and negative become positive, so plus 2 e to the x. And remember, we have a plus C with indefinite integrals. The one thing you can do here, and this is a perfectly valid solution, but you can factor out an e to the x. So we'll have an e to the x times x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus C. And this is your simplified version of the integral of x squared e to the x. So again, I hope that in this video you've seen how integration by parts is useful, because without this method, we would have no way to integrate something like that. Anything with a product or a quotient, we would never be able to do. So integration by parts is helpful with so many of these functions that we would have no other way to integrate. So as always, let me know if you have any questions or any video recommendations for the future. But if not, then I will see you next time.